Hi everyone, and um, my name is Bethany, as Nicole mentioned. So I am a singer educator, and I'm so excited to be back with you all again this month. If you're not aware, September is National Sewing Month. So today we are just gonna take a moment to remind ourselves why we love sewing so much. If you're new to one of our classes with Singer and Michaels, just to give you a little history here, uh, we have been doing my uh, classes. Singer has been doing classes with Michaels since March of 2021. We've done quite a few classes. We've done so many projects, so many opportunities to learn different techniques and sewing. And uh, we've been, we've just been having so much fun with you all. So, and we're not stopping at all. Um, but we just wanted to take a minute. Michael's wanted us to kind of revisit some of the things that we've taught and learned over that time frame because we have a feeling a lot of you may not have been there since we first started doing this, and that's fine. So I'm going to ask you if you're in the chat to let us know if this is your first time attending a singer class with Michaels, if you've been to several before. And then as we go through these projects and we kind of revisit some of them, um, if you have attended that class, let us know. If you made that project, let us know in the chat. Um, because I would love to know if you've made any of these or came to those classes, that would mean the world to me. Um, but if you missed a class and you see a project that we're gonna talk about and you're like, I love that and I need to make it, we're going to be putting a bunch of links in the chat today. Um, we also are going to be putting a document in the chat. So if you miss a link to a class, and when I say a link, we're going to be dropping the recording from that class. Um, so when you go to Michael's YouTube channel, all of our classes, all of their classes are recorded and then they're shared to their YouTube channel within 24 to 48, 48 hours after it's recorded. Sometimes it can be a little hard to find things. So we did create a list here. <laughs> and we're going to drop that in the chat too. So um, these are a list of the classes that we've taught. So if maybe you didn't catch the link in the chat, don't worry, you'll have this document. So you'll know exactly what to search when you go to Michael's YouTube channel, because there's going to be a lot going on in the chat today. As Nicole mentioned, I have two lovely coworkers, colleagues, friends helping me out today in the background, Sonny and Amy. It says Sonny was singer and Amy was singer. So if you see them commenting or putting links in the chat, those links are okay. If you see anybody else putting a link in the chat, I wouldn't click on it, okay? Unless it's from Nicole, who's moderating our class today. Um, otherwise, don't click on it. So um, those are gonna be trusted links coming from Amy specifically, and we'll be helping out there. If you have any questions, send them a message as well. And I say we just kind of dive in. Um, I see quite a few people here in the chat saying this will be class number three, that you've been to several. It's my first time. I'm so excited you're here with me. Lots of first timers, oh my goodness. Well, I'm so excited to have you. Um, like I said, we have been uh, teaching these classes for a few years now, two and a half years now, and we love it. And we love connecting with you. Sometimes we do one a month. Sometimes we do two a month. This is a two of the month, two, two classes this month, and we're gonna have two classes in October. So I'm going to be giving you some sneak peeks today of what's to come. The other thing is, if you stay through the end of this class, I do have a free project for you today. Um, so I'm going to be showing you what it is. It's a project that I, we wouldn't have time to sew up in the 45 minutes we have together, but it's a great project and it's great for you to use in your sewing journey, in your sewing space, or if you travel with sewing. Um, I don't know about you, but I like to take my sewing with me if I travel, so or to sewing meetups. So this will be a great project for you all to be able to take uh, and be able to make on your own. And a lot of the things that we're, we've already taught, if you need help with something in that project, we've already taught a class on it, so you can reference those as well. All right, so let's dive in. Now, our first few classes that we did weren't actually me doing them. It was Sonny, who's here with us today. Um, Sonny did five classes, um, and it was our first five classes. And this was in March of 2021. And on the list, you'll see what each of them are called. But it was basically each each one broke down like getting started with your sewing machine. So there was like threading, what do the different stitches do, how to use your machine, different techniques, really good for if you're a beginner sewist, just got a machine, or you just need to get a refresher course. Maybe it's been a while since you've sewn or sat down in front of your sewing machine. So I highly recommend if that is you, then go back and watch those classes that Sonny did. She is wonderful at teaching 
um, just how to get started and build your confidence and get really comfortable with the machine. Because once you're comfortable with your sewing machine, well, then the rest is just learning new techniques, right? But we want to make sure you're set up for success. And that, those classes are really going to do that. Then we skipped ahead to July. I joined the team and Sonny and I collectively did three classes in the month of July. Um, so that was super fun, a great way to kind of dive in. And we did a Christmas in July theme, which was always fun. And so our very first project and the first one I did with our Michaels group here was a Christmas tree garland. So I'm going to kind of hold this up. And this is a simple, fun project. It's long, so I'm going to hold up half of it here. <laughs> um, but you can put this along your mantle. You could hang this, you know, on the wall or even wrap it around your tree if you wanted. These are super cute. Now, I don't know if you can see. Let me see here. I have one. This one, I'll hold it up. It, we even used some decorative stitches to add some like fun features to the little Christmas tree. And if you don't want it to go on a garland, you can just make it its own little ornament. And these are reversible and they have these little fringed edge and it's got batting in there. So it's got a little bit of a thickness to it. And if you didn't want to do Christmas trees, you could trace another shape do snowmen or even pumpkins for Halloween. So this is gonna give you a great foundation on getting started with making a garland and how to measure to fit your space. Um, so I hope you take some time to learn. This was a great fun first project that we did together. Yes. <laughs> All right, so the next one that we did for uh, Christmas in July was a ruffled kitchen towel. So what we actually did is we took a towel that we already had and we added everything you see here on it. So we added some really big rickrack, which is always fun. It's hard to tell on camera with the lighting, but this is actually a ruffled ribbon. And this came from Michael's as well. And then I folded over and ruffled the um, fabric on the bottom with a ruffler foot. And so we show how to use one of the specialty ruffler feet. So if you've never used one, they're really satisfying and fun to use. But you can see on the back here, this is what the bottom of that uh, kitchen towel looked like before. And we just attached all of this. How fun is that? You could even, you know, get creative and do more up at the top, but this would be super cute hanging on your stove. So this was a great kind of beginner friendly project of taking something that already exists and embellishing it. That's always a fun way to do something quick and easy. And then our third one was a tree door hanger. I had a friend tell me that this was kind of more of like a cat toy, but I love it. <laughs> so, and I don't have a cat, so it didn't come to mind when I did it. I don't know if you can hear it, so these are squares that are folded and tacked down and we added the little bells at each one. And what's really cool about this is they're only tacked in one place to each other. So when they, uh, when if you put this around a doorknob, uh, it will move with the door. It's got a lot of motion to it, which is really fun with a, a sewing project to get that kind of feel. So I think this one's super cute. And this would be fun in a lot of different fabrics or all the same fabric. It's totally up to you. But these were some fun fabrics that we had picked out. And I love it. So anyways, I'm going to check. Uh, let's see here. So yes, um, Chrissy, the previous classes that we've done, the replays are always going to be over at Michael's YouTube channel. The list that we created is going to help you if you say, oh, I really want to make, maybe you make a note today and say, I really want to make this little jingle Christmas tree door hanger. Then you can go in here and see tree door hanger. And you know, that's what you need to search for. S put in singer and search that project name in Michael's YouTube channel. Um, so when you go to their, your, their YouTube channel, you can search for that specifically, but we're also going to try to add some links here today too. So those were our Christmas in July projects. They were super fun. And then we moved into September. And this is honestly probably one of my favorite. I have a couple favorite projects. I mean, I love them all, but this was probably one of, let me rephrase that. This is one of my most used 
projects that I've made with you all. Um, it's called the three in one sewing organizer. And again, we made this for September because I always like to give you all something that you can use in your sewing journey during national sewing month. So here it is. I've made three of these. So I have them everywhere. I have one that lives in my sewing studio. I have two that live in my sewing room and I take them with me whenever I go sewing. So this is a thread catcher. This is the three in one thread catcher. It's got a pocket. You can put your little corner turner, your sewing gauge, your I have a little scissor snip somewhere you could put in here. And then you have your pin cushion on top. And this just sits right here next to your sewing machine. So you have your pens. You could, if you sew with clips, you can clip your clips around the edge. I do that all the time. You never lose your scissors, your sewing gauge, and then your threads get thrown right here instead of in your lap or on the floor where they typically want to go. So this just helps keep everything nice and organized. And if you make one, what's great is you can go from sewing machine and then you just take all of this and your whatever your project is and go over to your ironing board, hang it from your ironing board. So as you iron and you need to repin or remove pins, you can still do that, trim any threads and it's all together and you're not leaving things and having to walk back and forth. Um, so we're just trying to make your sewing experience a lot more easy and enjoyable and efficient and fun with this project. So I hope you like this one. Seriously, this is probably, it is my most used project I've made. That's why there's so many pins sticking in it right now. All right, so that was September and then October, we did three more classes in October. <laughs> we were really excited about Halloween. And if you haven't noticed this one right here beside me, this one's probably one of my favorites. It's definitely been a fan favorite for sure. So this is actually an apron. Um, I bought the apron from Michaels. So I bought a pink apron. Um, they have different colors that you can get. I'll show you, just turn my little dress form around. It just ties right here on the back. And we added rows of tulle. And again, that ruffled, this is what that ruffled ribbon looks like on that, that black version on that kitchen towel. I use the same, but on a, obviously a different color on this. So I love this ruffled ribbon and it covers up that top seam here of our tiers of tool, very glittery tool. Glitter is optional. Um, I'm surprised this still has glitter on it after all these years, but it does. And then in the tutorial, you'll get a template on how to cut out the felt flamingo face that I drew. And, um, and then this is just a feather boa and I show you how to tack this down. So this looks like you know, the body of the flamingo and then the neck that comes up and around and here's the head. Um, so this is really fun. I hope though that you all see this and go, what else could I make with an apron? You know, this could be so many different things. Um, and I've, I'm sure you all are very creative. It doesn't have to be a flamingo. So this will teach you how to accomplish a look, but then maybe spin it to a different character, a different animal whatever you want to do. But I love this because if you're a teacher or you work in an office and you, they like to dress up, but you still have to like work <laughs> and have meetings or, you know, can't always have a costume on. This is a great way to just throw a little costume on and be festive right over what you're wearing and then take it right back off when you're done. So I love this one. This has always been a, a favorite of mine. So I hope you all take a minute to give that a whirl this October when, um, because we, this was a fun one. Then we shifted into doing something for kids. So for the kiddos, we got to work with felt again. So sewing with felt is actually really fun and super easy. And so we did some more felt um, projects and we did these cute little kid masks. Look at how, we got to put the little paw print pattern on the back, but um, we used stitches to make the whiskers. We figured out how to kind of attach and, and make all these fun little shapes and little nose. And then we did one with a mummy. And there's also two others that I don't have here with me. Um, one is a Frankenstein and one is a pumpkin. So, but I, we talked about in that class how y'all got really chatty in that class and the, in the chat, because you're like, Oh, you could change the shape of the ear to make it a puppy dog, or you could turn, you know, the pumpkin into an owl or, you know, there's some really cool, like examples of how you can take these shapes and make it something else. So get creative with this. Um, but these are really fun for kids. I feel like you could almost make them for adults as well. <laughs> if you wanted to make them a little bigger, but these are super fun and it's a great introduction to sewing with felt, which can be a lot of fun and a great project maybe for kiddos to help you with. So we have that one. 
And then our last project for October, we really dove into a technique that um, you hear quite often. Uh, maybe you all have, some of you have even tried it before. It's called applique. You're gonna see quite a few applique projects because it's such a fun way to embellish and add to something that's existing or, and that's what we did in this one. So we did little, some people don't wanna go full costume, okay? So we did a little t-shirt applique ghost. I'm gonna hold that up. And then of course I had to make a little onesie one for baby. And these shirts are sold and the onesie are sold at Michael's so you can go get them. You can maybe find one in your closet that you wanna use. And we teach you how to applique this on. So on the buttons for the eyes, um, you, we use a satin stitch for the mouth and satin stitch to go all the way around. But what we really teach you in this class with applique is you know, we're, we're sewing a woven non-stretch fabric onto a stretchy material. Like this is a, this is a onesie, it's a knit shirt. And so we need to know how to sew and attach a woven to a knit shirt and it look and last really well through wash and wear. So we teach you about using the right stabilizers. There's actually two different stabilizers that we used on this project. So we go into full detail of really making sure you're sewing something that's gonna last a long time. And so there's, there's applique in general, but the, the, what you're appliquing it onto will determine how you, the stabilizers you need to use. So let's see here if I can show you on this one. So this one, there's the inside. This is a, uh, like a mesh. So it's gonna allow it to kind of fit with the shirt. And then we actually used a tear away stabilizer as well. And that we've already torn away after we were done. So there was two layers of stabilizer here to make sure that this always looks super cute. So if you want to learn how to embellish a shirt, especially something knit and stretchy, this was a great class. So maybe you don't wanna do the Halloween theme, but to learn how to do it on something knit, those are the techniques that you're gonna take away from this class. Now I'm gonna pause for a minute and take a sip of water. Is there um, any questions that I might've missed? You guys have been chatting it up. Have any of you done any of these classes before and projects? Yes, Sonny is absolutely right. Make sure to check out this class for great information on knit. So yes, you definitely wanna do that. I saw that Amy even linked the flamingo costume in the chat. So if you want to save that link for later, I'm telling you, this was a really fun one. It was a little messy because I chose the glitter tool. So you may not want to go glitter, but uh, um, you've been warned. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're looking forward to trying some of these, Kathy. That's all I care. I mean, I just, I want you guys to feel inspired today in today's class and and um, we'll go through a few more. And then maybe while we're going through some of these, if any of you want to share in the chat, like why you love to sew, what may, what maybe got you into sewing? We would love to hear that. Cause you know, sometimes I don't think we forget where, how we got into it. We were talking with Nicole before we joined the class today of, you know, she likes to sew too. And how, she, what the things she likes to sew. And uh, it's just a fun way for us to kind of build this community. So, all right. So after October, we had December. And we did two classes. Um, one was a project class and it was a holiday bottle gift bag. And I'm gonna show you what they look like. These are actually made with fleece. So there's a little stretchy. This one's backwards, let me turn that around. And so I just did them with fleece. I put a little, cute little Christmassy cuff on them, tied a little ribbon around the neck. These are great for gifts or even just to decorate your bottles in your kitchen or wherever. So this could be a really, I have several of these. I have so many. So I just picked two out, um, but these are really fun and a very quick sew, but we actually sewed these up on a serger. So this was our first serger project that we did. And our next class that we did in December was a, actually, I think we did it before the project class was um, like introduction to serging sewing one-on-one -on -one introduction to serging, I think is what it was called. And we um, really took a dive into some serger techniques. We talked about some different stitches you can do with your serger and what those settings are. So if you have a serger and you are intimidated or scared to use it or not sure what to do, 
this is a great class for you. And then you'll have a project to do that's really quick and easy um, so that you can kind of build that confidence on the techniques you just learned. It's a wonderful class. And so every time someone messages me and says, I don't know how to use my serger. I don't know how to get it set up correctly. I just send them that link to that class. So highly recommend tuning in to the serger class if you wanna learn to master your serger. It's not, not the only serger class we've done. I have another one that um, we did at the beginning of this year. So once we get through our 2022 classes, I will uh, show you it and talk about it a little more. Um, so how do I find the pattern for the flamingo face? It's attached to the instructions. So it should be there. Um, and if not, let us know, but it should be at the end of the pattern instructions. Um, January of 2022, we did one of my favorite things to do. And I actually made another one of these recently as a baby shower gift for my brother and sister-in-law who are expecting their first. I'm finally going to get to be an aunt. So now I'm in like baby clothes making mode. Um, but I made them a rope basket. So we dove into, probably saw this sitting here. Uh, this class is all about how to sew with rope. We use our heavy duty Singer sewing machine for this. And this was a fun class because the, obviously we couldn't make this whole basket in the class. So I showed you and excuse the coffee stains because I use these, like these are my favorite things. So we talked about how to sew rope and make it into a coaster. And the way you start a coaster is the same way you start a bowl or a basket or any of it. So we started with the coaster so you can learn how to make something small. And then we started another one and made it into a bowl. And so we grew it out and curved up the sides and made it short. And it was like a little bowl to catch things. You could put it on your coffee table if you wanted. And then the last one was the big old basket, which is the same way you start the coaster. It's the same way you turn it up for the bowl. You just do it a lot bigger. And then I taught how to finish it off with these fun handles. And there's actually several different kinds of handles you can do. You can get really creative. I like to add these fun little macrame beads. This is not macrame rope, by the way. This is actually what's called clothesline rope because it's a lot stronger. So it's gonna help the basket hold its shape. This one's gotten a little floppy over the years because it, I don't know if you can tell, this is a uh, fabric and it has paw prints on it. So this is actually the basket that sits in my sewing room with dog toys in it. And my little dog can't get into it. So she like kind of sits into it. So that's why it's always kind of scrunched down. So I kind of ironed it to straighten it up. So there's a couple of ways that you can embellish your rope baskets or coasters or bowls. You can leave the rope just like it is plain. You can wrap fabric around it. And I like to do it in just different sections, even on the bottom. It's always a fun way to add a pop of color. So I did that for the one that I made my brother and sister-in-law and this really pretty sage green to match the little boy's room so they could put diapers or blankets or toys in it, whatever they want to use it for. It's a good size basket, as you can see. And then you could even dye the rope. So I actually used rip dye to dye this rope pink and sewed it up. So you can do that as well if you don't want to use fabric. Now I'm gonna show you one of these baskets that I made that we didn't teach a class on, but it's the same concept, but it's probably one of my favorite projects I've ever made of all time. And I love showing it off. So I had to bring it and pull it out for today. So this is a rope basket that I made. It's completely wrapped in orange fabrics. I used three different ones just to give it some dimension, but I made a lid for it. So it's kind of like the res reverse I made, this is all rope here. This little stem is rope. The only thing that's not rope are these little leaves that I made. And then this is felt and it's actually just stuck right onto the side. It just sticks. So you can take it off after Halloween and then you can use it for candy, treats, whatever you want. Now, if you wanna learn how to make the pumpkin one, we do have it over on singer.com um, under projects, it's free. But it's the same way we started these. So I recommend, this is advanced, okay? So I recommend if you've never sewn with rope, start with this class. You do need to know how to set yourself up for success and get started. And then if you ever get up, worked up to doing something like this with a lid, there is a tutorial for it, but it lives over on singer.com. But I just, I just had to show it off. How long did it take to make this one? A few hours of a few hours. The slowest part is honestly wrapping 
the fabric around the rope. Sewing it really is quick. It's a zigzag stitch over and over and over again. Um, you just need to make sure you have the right needles, the right stitch settings, and definitely, I, you know, I, we use the heavy duties. I've always sewn them up on our heavy duties. They just do such a great job sewing through something this thick. Um, and then you can see, one thing I didn't point out is I sewed this one up with black thread. So you could see all the stitches, which adds a whole nother element versus sewing it up with, this is, this one is, I need to make a new one. This has got coffee stains all over. It's embarrassing. Um, but I just used white thread on this one. So you didn't see the stitches. I used pink thread on this one. So you didn't see the stitches, but I used black. So you could really see the stitches, which I thought was super fun. So you can get really creative. I've seen people use variegated thread where it changes colors as you, and that is super cool. Like, I hope that just sparks inspiration for you all. These are super fun. They really do look like what you could buy at a store, but why when you can pick it yourself? Um, it would, you know, I will say I did not sit down and do this straight. I did sp spread it out over a couple of days. So someone said it would take me days to make that. I did pace myself, <laughs> um, but it's super fun. So uh, yeah, that one, that one comes out every Halloween. I love that one's traveled with me quite a bit. All right, so after January and we learned how to sew rope, which is a material that a lot of people don't even realize you can sew. But now that we've conquered that, we're gonna head back into applique um, for our next class. Now in 2022, we kind of did um, a kind of combination of uh, projects and tutorials uh, or technique classes. So one month we would learn about applique techniques and really dive in deep on a lot of variety of different applique techniques. And then the next month we would apply those techniques to a project. So you might find some other classes on um, Michael's YouTube channel that we've done that we aren't talking about today because it's not a project focus. It was more of a technique focus. So this is one of those. Um, we did a class on applique techniques in April. And then in May of 2022, we sewed up a beach towel. Now, when you're doing applique on a beach towel, we're gonna need a couple of different stabilizers. And we even put one on the front here that was a clear um, wash away, melt away uh, water, um, uh, my words have left me, but it's a stabilizer that's clear and you put over the top of your applique and then it will wash away. Um, and the reason we do that is because Terry cloth has got loops, a bunch of little loops. And we want this to sew really cleanly all the way around all of these shapes. And so utilizing a stabilizer on the front allows the needle to not get caught on all these little loops. It makes for a cleaner stitch. Um, we did have a tearaway stabilizer on the back. You can still see some of it here because I haven't used this towel. So I do want it to stay white. <laughs> and um, so we do still have some tearaway here, but we tore the rest of it around off. Um, and so this was a really fun project to teach you how to sew on maybe a more challenging fabric that is terry cloth, like a beach towel or a uh, bath towel. And so we use this really big zigzag and we made this fun hangover, you know, flower. You can use whatever shape you could use letters. My mom made me one of these beach towels when I was little that said my name because nothing had the name Bethany on it. It's still hard to find things with the name Bethany on it. So she made me a beach towel that had my name on it in applique. And then it had these cute little sunglasses on it. Now, my mom knows what she's doing with applique. She loves to applique. Her applique looks great still to this day. I have that beach towel. I love it. I don't use it anymore because the towel has fallen apart, but the applique has lasted over 30 years, we'll just say it's been a long time. And that's because she did it the right way. And so if you do it the way that we teach you, your applique will probably outlast whatever you sew it onto. So then we, on this towel, we even added some fun little rickrack ties so that your towel doesn't slide down your beach chair. So we really think of everything with these projects and we hope you enjoy them. I know summer's kind of coming to an end but these could actually make some really fun gifts for the holidays or if someone's going on a vacation over the winter and they need a towel, this could be a great, great fun gift for the kids too. Clear water soluble stabilizer. That's a mouthful, but Sonny always has the words that I'm missing. So thank you, Sonny. That's what I was trying to say. 
All right. So we did in April and May, we did how to applicate. And then in May, we did the project of applying those techniques. Then we skip ahead to July and August and in 2022. And we did a class on how to sew zippers. I think this might have been our most attended class that we've ever done. Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we had so many people come to this class and it just reiterates the need for more of those kind of like technique classes. So we've really been trying to balance between technique classes and projects, um, but projects are so fun too. So again, we did a whole class on how to sew different zippers, exposed zippers, invisible zippers. We kind of covered it all. And then the following month in August, we did make a zipper pouch. We started with just something very simple to get you used to sewing zippers. So we made these fun little zipper pouches. I just stuffed some thread in here so it would stand up. Um, and we did the little box bottoms on it. So it's a nice wide pouch. Um, I even made a really big one that you can do. These are lined, which is fun. And um, so we always love a good line. This is lined with some paw print fabric. If you haven't guessed yet, I love my dogs. Um, so I do a lot of doggy projects, but uh, we have uh, the box bottoms again. This is a really nice, now for this one, I may even go back in, you know, and I mentioned this in the class of adding a strap or handle or something, cause it's so tall, but this is just a fun, these are fun little projects. So if you're a beginner to zippers, you wanna learn the basics of making a zipper pouch. This is a great class for you. And so I would search for the zipper pouch project on that one. Um, but they were fun. They're easy. Uh, I use them all. The, I make them all. The, I made some recently um, in a clear vinyl so I could see through it and put all of my clips in it because I'm always losing my clips when I'm sewing. Great for sewing notions. Great for pencils for back to school. That's a, another option. All right. So then after that, we went on to October. October, we didn't do a project. We actually just talked about how to sew buttonholes. Buttons and buttonholes. It's another one of those topics that people get really intimidated by. This is another class that a lot of people attended. So if buttons and buttonholes intimidate you, I highly recommend that you go look at that class. Um, it was really fun. We had some great techniques, some great tips, um, especially once you finish that beautiful buttonhole, how to open it up in the middle. Um, so that you don't slice right through those stitches with your seam ripper. There's some great tips there. So I really recommend taking some time. I think a lot of people avoid sewing buttonholes, but I think a lot of people also avoid sewing buttons and they just do it by hand. And why, when it's so easy on a machine and it's going to last a really long time when you sew it with your machine. So I show you how to do that as well, because we have a wonderful button foot that comes with your machine. Um, okay, so then for November, we went back to doing another project, and it's this one right here. It's the roll-up placemat, and I did it in some fun fall fabrics, and you just untie it. So this is if you were going to, like, I don't know where you live, but here, early November, even mid-November, it's actually really nice out. Even around Thanksgiving, it can be really nice out, and so sometimes you just want to have a little picnic or eat outside, or a table on your back porch. And so this is a roll up placemat and it has pockets for it. So this is like for your napkin. And then you have these smaller pockets for your silverware. And that way it can all stay nice and clean and rolled up. And then when you get there, you have a little placemat and everything you need and you have a nice clean surface to eat on. And then this is obviously machine washed and then you can quilt it. So we did a little quilting here for the back. Um, and you can see some of the straight line quilting that we did. So this does kind of introduce quilting a little bit to our Michael's uh, audience. And so this was a fun one. And I know I made this in fall theme, but you could do this for any time of the year. Choose your own fabrics. So this is another fun one. I think this one would also, I think in the project, this one we even showed how you gave some shapes of how you could applique a little shape onto it or pumpkin or leaf or name. Super cute stuff. Um, okay, I'm just starting to learn how to sew crafts. I'm hoping to learn how to use my serger. Um, yes, so I, this, I think the serger class would be a great introduction to using your serger. Um, I think Sonny kind of responded as with the same thing. The techniques are very similar. Um, maybe how to thread yours might be a little different than one of the Singer ones, but once you get it threaded, you're for sure going to 
we use the same settings to do a four thread overlock stitch or a rolled hem or, you know, a flat lock. So there's so many different things that you can do with it and it'll be a great overview and then you can take it and dive in a little further. So, um, so speaking of, uh, let's move on to December. So December we did ornaments, which is very on theme for the holidays. And I showed you one earlier, which is the little Christmas tree. So we brought this little Christmas tree back and we did a simple ornament with some little decoration. I think a little bell here would be really cute. You know, I like the bells. But then we did these little bitty mini stockings. Okay, I'll hold them up one at a time. How cute is this little rainbow fabric with the snowflakes? And then a little more traditional. Now these are great and I'll tell you, there's, they've got a couple of uses. It could be an ornament, it could be a gift tag and you could put a gift card in it. Um, my mom, um, when she decorates for her table for Christmas dinner, she puts the silverware and she rolls um, the silverware into the napkin and then sticks it down in here and it's at every place setting. And then whoever, wherever you're sitting, that's the one that you get to take home as like a little favor for her Christmas dinner. Um, so she kind of inspired me to make these with you guys and they're so fun, but then you could take it home and hang it on your tree or put a gift card in it. And so these are super cute, super fun, very easy to make. And then we made this one, the cathedral window. Now I know it looks hard, but I promise it's not. And this is one of those that you have to trust the process and it comes together. Um, I actually had so much fun making these. They're like a little pink, like these actually make really good pin cushions too. So if you wanted to take this and do different fabrics and um, not make it an ornament, you could, this, this actually makes a really cute pin cushion. Um, side, side note there, but this is a really cute ornament and it's very impressive, but they're very simple and it doesn't take a lot of fabric. So if you wanna try something like this, these would make a really fun gift as well. All right, now that we're through the holidays again, we're gonna go back to January of this year. So we're getting caught up. We're making good progress here. So remember how I said earlier, we did another serger project. This is it. It's an infinity scarf and these make wonderful gifts. They don't take a lot of fabric and it was completely made on the serger except for that final seam I did so shut with a sewing machine. So. You could do this whole thing on a sewing machine, but I mean, ugh, this faux chenille fabric is so soft, <laughs> um, but I haven't worn a scarf in a while. And I also made one in a cable knit. And so I talk about how to measure it, how to serge it, how to turn it right side out. And then we have, um, let me see if I can find the seam here. But I just saw it, here it is. So here's our, end seam where the two ends come together. So on the other side, we do have one little opening that we had. And then I just fold that under and, and sew it on my, uh, with a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. So you could use a sewing machine and a zigzag stitch for this whole project. But if you're wanting to practice using your serger, this is a great one because it's very forgiving because it's wrapped up around someone's neck. So if it's not perfectly straight seam, it's okay. Um, nobody's going to know. And I've made these for my mom and my sister-in-law last year for Christmas. They love their scarves. And you can do these in different fabrics. You could even do these in really lightweight, like sheer fabric for like the spring and summer when people wear scarves, different types of scarves then and make it a little smaller. I'm getting warm already under these studio lights. So I'm going to take this one off, but they are so cozy and I absolutely love this purple fabric. So got to love a good scarf. You can never have too many, especially in the winter. Um, in March of 2023, you guys are talking about surgers. I see you talking about them in the chat. I, I know a lot of people really want to understand and learn surgers. They're fantastic. I'm a huge fan of them. They're probably some of my favorite machines to use as a serger. So once you get into it, you're going to love it. Um, so in March of 2023, we went over some more detailed serger techniques. Um, so it's another serger class that you're going to want to revisit. Um, it's more of like some of the advanced techniques or trying some new things, how to really get custom, you know, stitches based on the material you're sewing. So sewing a cotton you know, on a serger is different than sewing like that cable knit. Um, so learning those settings and those different things on a serger is going to help you have that success. So that's a class that is more technique. We're teaching techniques on that one. So definitely check that one out. 
And then in May, it was a technique class, but I do have the samples here with me. I don't keep all the samples from the technique class because there's just not enough totes in the world. But we did um, free motion sewing techniques. So if you've never heard of free motion, it's, it's like doodling <laughs> with your machine. So basically when you're doing, when you're regularly sewing, your fabric feeds through the machine. With free motion, you lower the feed dogs, those little teeth on the machine plate, you lower those so they aren't in operation. Um, and that means the fabric's not gonna feed through the machine. You are going to move the fabric wherever you want it to go. So this is like free motion quilting, um, that free motion sewing. We did a couple of different things. And these may be a little hard to see. And Sonny may have to remind me on some what some of these different stitches are called. <laughs> um, but there's several different ways that you can do this. And it might actually, we'll see if it shows up on the front side. Yeah. So this one, you know, we just kind of started in the circle in the center and we just like went round and round and round and round. And this was just, just, just getting comfortable with the motion. Okay. Um, the key here with, without diving in too deep, the key here is keeping like this line of horizon line as Sonny calls it, um, to make sure that we're not turning so much this way. We're moving it on this axis. It's, it takes some getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's so much fun. So we create these little squares to practice. We did some back and forth straight line, like kind of designs. Um, this one is, uh, very much like a squiggly here. There's probably another term for this. This is called pebbling. I do know this one. Um, this one may be a little hard to see on that side. Let me roll around. See all these little circles really over and over and over. When you do a bunch of these and they're all different sizes, it'll look like pebbles on the fabric. This is how you get some really cool texture technique deal, um, texture and detail on a quilt on a wall hanging, on a project, super fun. Another fun one that we show is free motion, like writing, uh, which is probably some of my favorite to do where you can use a fabric pen um, or a template and you can write like your name and then you can trace over it. <laughs> Once you get comfortable, you don't even have to use a template to write your name. You can just do it straight with um, the free motion and you can do it with a straight stitch. The, some of these you can do with zigzag stitches. It's stippling is when you squiggle over your quilt. <laughs> Sonny with the terminology today again. Thank you. For um, the, the presser foot that you would need for free motion would be um, a darning foot um, or you could an embroidery foot. So a darning foot is what it's called. And that's also covered in this class um, to be able to make sure that you're set up for success with that. So we talk about needles, we talk about the right presser foot, how to set up your machine to do uh, free motion. So be sure to check out all of that. Um, yeah, the stippling is the idea is to not cross your lines. I kind of did. So <laughs> I'm still learning some of these stippling and Sonny's are, she's much more used to doing this kind of technique and quilting. Um, but we also talked about um, straight line quilting you can see some of it here on the back. Well, not really, but you can see it on the front, um, the quilting. So we do like more straight line quilting using a walking foot. So this is, if you're new to quilting, this is a great place to start. This is an, this is a thing to practice and, and work up to. So I'm still practicing <laughs> and there's definitely certain techniques of free motion that I find I'm, you know, more comfortable with than others. So I have some practicing to do, but it's really fun. It's, it's, it's very fluid. And I just really love the full control I have of creating something very unique. So I really enjoyed that one. And then we move on to June. June was another technique class where we just dove into presser feet. I think I had, I think this was a rush class because I had 10 presser feet that I wanted to get through. And I think I got through nine out of the 10. And the 10th one was the walking foot, which we talked about during the quilting class. So that's why I had saved it for elastic case. I didn't have time. So we talked about a lot of the different um, presser feet that come with your machine and some of the presser feet that are accessories that you can get. Um, so I highly recommend if you've got 
feet that came with your machine and you're like, I have no idea what this is or how to use it, that's a great class for you. Um, July, we did another applique techniques class, kind of more advanced. It was a great class. Again, if you're really interested in applique, I would go check that out. That was just a couple of months ago. And then in August, we did another class. This was the first time we've done a class mostly focused on machine. And we introduced the class to computerized machines. Now we've some with computerized machines in these project classes, but we've never really talked about the features and benefits of computerized machines. So we had several set up. We went into what all of these extra features do, how they work. A lot of people can be a little intimidated by computerized machines. I personally love having all the extra bells and whistles as I call them. Um, but at the end of the day, a computerized machine is to just level up your sewing experience make it more efficient, make it more enjoyable experience, have all the tools that you need right there. It takes some of the guesswork out of some of those settings. You know that it's set perfectly. Whereas a mechanical machine, you really have to full control over all of that. Um, so it's it's just a fun experience. And we had a great class over computerized machines. Now we're caught up to today. How about that? Did we go through a lot of projects? What was your favorite project that Bethany showed today? What a great question, Sonny. I would love to know, would love to know what your favorite project is. And before, <clears throat> while you guys are letting us know in the chat, I want to tell you what's coming up next. So I did mention I have another class in September. It's in two weeks from today. So not next week, but the week after. And we can drop a link in the chat uh, to sign up for because I know it's already up on Michael's. And I'm going to show you what we're going to make. You want a little sneak peek? A little sneak peek? We're going to do a little scrap buster project. And we're going to make a lanyard, a little mini wallet, and a little chapstick holder. And our little mini wallet has two little pockets here. This is great. I actually use this at work quite a bit because I'm running around sewing, doing stuff. I got a little badge ID and I can clip it to it, but I always have to have my chapstick nearby, which I have right here. And I always need some cash for the vending machine. I mean, that's a little sweet snack in the afternoon. Um, but if you're a teacher, these are great. If you work somewhere and you need, I mean, these are just quick grab and go. You can make these in so many different patterns and prints, but this is a great scrap buster project. Doesn't take a lot of fabric, just a little bit of hardware. And so this is what we're gonna make in two weeks. Super fun, super fun project. All right. All right, favorite projects from today. Pumpkin basket, doorknob hanger. Someone loves the doorknob hanger. My cats like your bells project. <laughs> They're talking about this one right here. Zipper pouches. Um, the zipper pouches are awesome. Love the apron costumes, the flamingo costume, the pumpkin. Let it have its moment again. It's just, oh, its nose is crooked. Here we go. I love how I can just like peel all of this off. And now it's Thanksgiving, it's fall, it's past Halloween. I can still use it. Um, all right, so uh, coming up in October, I've got a few minutes left. I kind of wanted to get through all of our projects because I have something I want to show you. Um, in October, we're launching a couple of new products with Michaels. I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited. So we have two, two new products and I'm going to teach the first class in October. And then my counterpart is going to teach um, the second class at the end of October. And they're both going to be uh, overviews um, of the new products. It's going to give you an opportunity to ask us questions because we are obsessed with these products. So we're super excited about them. And the first one is sitting right behind me. I don't know if you've been seeing it this whole class. It's been sitting right here. So this actually is a brand new machine that Singer just launched. It's going to be in Michael stores next month. It's called the Singer SE 9180. It is a sewing and embroidery machine. If you can't tell, let me move some stuff over. I'll bring it closer. Without going into too much, because we're going to have a whole class on it, but I want to point out a few things about this machine, because this is a machine that we've, we've just never had a machine like this before. We're so excited. But the first thing that you're probably going to see is this big touch screen right here. It's a seven inch touch screen. Right now it's in embroidery mode because I have the embroidery arm attached. But if I detach the embroidery arm, it'll switch to sewing mode. The other really cool thing about this machine, I mean, there's so many features. One of the other cool things is it is Wi-Fi enabled and it connects directly to my SoNet. My SoNet is our sewing and I mean our embroidery software. So this is where you can really 
take it to the next level and have some amazing embroidery projects. And I brought one, some of you even mentioned the zipper pouches. So I embroidered this little funky monster with this machine on um, this, actually I bought this little zipper pouch. I, I had it, so this was an existing zipper pouch. So I was able to embroider right onto this. And then I went in and I lined it with some Cookie Monster fabric just to level it up. I may need to add a little name here, but um, this, is, this is some of the fun stuff that we're gonna be getting to do in future projects. I'm so excited. Um, so come back in October, we're gonna teach this class. I'm gonna teach this class and introduce you all to this machine. Um, we're excited to bring an embroidery machine to the Michaels audience here. The second class of October is going to be with my counterpart, Amanda, and she is our Ditto educator. So if you haven't heard about Ditto yet, Ditto is a projection system um, that will project your patterns right down onto your cutting mat so you can cut out your garment or your crafting project. Um, we have patterns for men, women, children, and some crafting projects. So and it, we're always adding new ones to our pattern catalog over there with Ditto. And so this is a whole new system. It's super fun. I've used it many times. I absolutely love sewing clothes. Um, I'm not a huge fan of using paper patterns because I can only cut them once. So I love the Ditto system and there's some great features and benefits that you guys are not going to want to miss this class. Like it's a game changer for sewing garments, but if you never sewn garments or you're intimidated by it, it, it literally answers all those questions. Uh, solves all those problems for sure. Um, and then the last thing um, I want to mention is we do have two more classes this year, one in November. We're going to do a fall quilted wall hanging project. I love a little wall hanging quilted project. So we're going to use a panel and create a fall project that way. And then for December, we're going to use this machine for a project and we're going to do some embroidered personalized ornaments. So I'm so excited to teach you about this class or this machine in October, and then we're going to use it for a project in December. Now, at the beginning of the class, if you were here at the very beginning, I mentioned that there is a project that I'm going to gift you all um, today that we haven't taught yet, and Amy's going to drop a link to it. And it's our, <clears throat> this little thing here, I know I showed you one roll-up project. This is another one. This is a roll-up um, organizer for all of your sewing, sewing tools. And we use some decorative stitches to decorate it and it rolls up nice and neat. And here it is, we'll open it up. I use some bright colors. So if it's really bright on your screen, I'm sorry. Um, but there's a pocket here. There's a zipper pouch here built in to put scissor snips or tape measure or whatever. And then on this end, maybe hard to see, there's th four pockets here and three pockets here for all of your presser feet to go in. And then you just roll it up and you keep your sewing supplies organized. Maybe you take it on the go with you. Um, this is a project that you guys get today and you're going to get to take it home with you. Um, so you can make it on your own. Now, if you're intimidated by the zipper, go back and watch our zipper class that we talked about. So everything that you need will be in this tutorial. Amy, I'm going to give you a second to make sure we get that uploaded before the class ends. Um, but yeah, this is a really fun one. I wanted to give you all something to take away today and be able to start making. Um, this is also a great project for scraps. You don't need a whole lot of fabric. Um, I just used some ribbon that I had on hand. Uh, the decorative stitches are fun to just play around with those on your machine. I feel like we don't use them enough. Um, so we have that and, uh, yeah. Any questions? I think we're just waiting for Amy to, maybe she's already linked it and I didn't see it. I love it. Been doing embroidery. Bethany, I hand. I'm sorry, Bethany. I did not link it yet. I'm locating it. Okay. Okay. I, I can resend it to you if you need me to real quick. Yes. Go ahead and do that, please. Okay. Y'all give us just a second. And we will get it going. Any other questions? Appreciate you guys being patient with us for just a second. Um, let's see here. Here we 
here it is. Amy, you should have it, but I'm going to send a link to you in our little chat as well. Perfect. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. There you go. So she's going to get that downloaded and posted in the chat in just a second. So I appreciate you all's patience because I want to make sure that you have that to be able to take with you and be able to make it. And I hope all of these projects have inspired you all to get in front of your sewing machine maybe right after this class and start sewing. I appreciate you sharing. I was reading some of them, all the reasons that you love to sew. Um, I, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about sewing. I've been doing it since I was seven. Um, I absolutely love it. I've literally sewn, I feel like so many different types of things. I, I will always try something new. I love learning new things and I love that we get to share that together. So Amy just dropped the travel accessory roll up right here, this, this thing. Uh, in the chat. So go click on that link right now before the class ends so you can download it and have it. Um, and then if you want to go to Michael's YouTube and search any of these classes and projects that we've talked about today, go do that. The tutorials will be linked in the descriptions of those videos. So you'll have those. And I hope you guys join us again in two weeks to make our little, where did I go? Here it is. So many projects on my table to make our little scrap buster project. So we will see you all in two weeks and then we'll be playing with some new exciting products in October. Um, again, be sure to, if you make any of these projects to use the hashtag make it with Michaels, hashtag Michaels classes, and then hashtag sing our sewing so we can see what you made. We appreciate you spending some time with us today and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you soon. Happy sewing.